Hello everyone, this video is about Psalm 23 and chakra clearance or an attunement of the spiritual centers and this video is in response to this request for a video about the physiology hidden within Psalm 23. So when researching the words and symbols written in this Psalm in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and other sources as well, it's clear to see the references of human anatomy, physiology, and the chakras. Even Swami Kriyananda agreed that this psalm invokes the cosmic spine and the inner alchemical process of enlightenment, and I can certainly see why it does that. Some of his students say that he used this psalm regularly as a meditation practice and had a visible aura or halo surrounding him when he was doing that. For thousands of years, many others have attested to the healing, uplifting and clearing benefits of this wonderful psalm as well. So let's break it down. The first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This verse is associated with the Muladhara root chakra. Muladhara means root of existence. It's our connection to the creative energy of earth relating to the element of carbon 666 and relating to material form. By recognizing the abundance of God or limitless true source love, divine substance, we move out of want and into the knowledge of our divinity. I shall not want implies I already know that I am eternally connected to an endless supply of everything. When we divide infinity or the endless love of God between the approximate nine billion people here on earth, it still equals infinity. Every person is connected to the divine stream of abundance, whether they realize it or not. Now, the root chakra can become blocked by various fears and mindsets, including poverty, lack, and insecurity. So by affirming the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, what you're really saying is, the limitless creative energy is my supplier. I am abundant in all ways. Choosing the Lord as your shepherd also means that you're denying the influence of other potential shepherds or forces or guides such as deception or the ego that could potentially lead you into a myriad of illusions and myths, mistruths about your origin and then you'd be stripped of your divine inheritance as a son or daughter of limitless power and unconditional love because the wall would be pulled over your eyes so to speak. So by saying this verse, we draw our attention to that root chakra and activate all of those energies stored there. So the second verse, really interesting, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. This is associated with the Swadhisthana or sacral chakra. Swadhisthana means I amness. It's the seat or the lower end of your watery soul body relating to the element of carbon, one, one, and the endocrine or lymphatic systems. 
the word the greek word lymph literally means spring water i wonder if you remember the bible parable in matthew and it's also in luke that describes jesus the i am commanding the stormy sea to be still well this verse invokes a similar authority and grace in our system Lying beside still waters means resting, releasing, and overcoming the raging tides of emotion and outer stimulus that, you know, can lead us astray and distract us and send us off on all kinds of like fool's errands. So resting brings us back to that central balance where we can feel and know the truth. All of our emotions cause the endocrine glands to secrete powerful hormones into the fluids of the body. Negative or low vibe emotions create stagnant waters or the buildup of acidity, toxins and chemicals that wreak havoc on our health, body, mind, soul and spirit. When the imprints of toxic emotions are released our internal waters are purified and we feel refreshed and revitalized the i am our true inner self is the master of our emotions and through it we have the power to adjust our inner and outer environments Let's take a quick look at the physiology signified by green pastures before we move on. Now, the waters of our bodies are fortified with minerals or salts of various types, such as natrium muriaticum, which is sodium chloride, and Kali muriaticum, which is potassium chloride. Chlorine chloride is one of seven essential macro minerals or salts in the body. And the root word chlor means green. And chlorine, which transforms to chloride and chloride transforms back to chlorine. So, you know, they are really sort of one and the same thing. Chloride is known as the green gas. And according to the hidden chemistry of lead, beta and besant, sodium chloride, salt, forms a nest of 12 vortices in water known as the emerald cross. So the green cross. And it's an energy field. Um, and a field is a pasture. Um, so it's a field or a pasture of spinning light. In Islam, a highly revered mythological figure named al qadr meaning green man, is depicted wearing a shining emerald green robe and is said to be the guardian of the source of the waters of immortality. And I believe he may well have symbolized chlorine chloride in the body. Chloride is an essential electrolyte and plays a crucial role in the various physiological functions within the human body. For example, electrolyte balance. Chloride, along with sodium and potassium, helps maintain the balance of electrolytes in and out of cells, which is essential for proper cellular function, so generation and regeneration. Two, acid-base balance. Chloride is a component of hydrochloric acid, HC1, in the stomach, aiding in digestion and contributing to the regulation of the body's acid-base balance, and also acts as a buffer to stabilize the body's pH as well, which is the potential hydrogen level, which if you've read The Cell of Life, you'll know how important that level is in the body. 
Chloride ions are involved in nerve impulse transmission. They help generate action potentials, which are crucial for communication between nerve cells. So literally our thoughts occurring and making us do things. Five, immune response. Chloride, chloride plays a role in the immune system's response to infections. It contributes to the formation of hypochlorous acid, a substance with antimicrobial properties, and also the transport of carbon dioxide. Chloride ions assist in the transport of carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs, where it can then be expelled from the body during respiration. And we do need to expel excess carbon dioxide in order to upgrade melatonin into DMT and the other biochemicals of enlightenment. And chloride also is involved in the formation of red blood cells. So with all of this in mind, we can see how powerful this scripture is for drawing our attention to the sacral chakra and therefore evoking the wondrous bodily processes that are governed there. And the sacral chakra is explored in depth in this previous video as well. So now we move on to the third verse. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. This is associated with the Manipura or solar plexus chakra. Mani means jewel um, and Pura means city or center, so an aggregation. And this dazzling jewel-like center relates to the element of nitrogen, the 777 element, the fire of life, and it relates to our electric nervous systems. The solar plexus is our seat of power. Restoring is healing. Being led in the paths of righteousness, righteousness is guidance. And for his namesake refers to purpose. When we evoke the energy of the third chakra with a scripture such as this, we're activating willpower, self-control, confidence, and tapping into our destiny or divine purpose. When our gut intuition is stoked and engaged, we feel a sense of wisdom and knowingness. So anything we're misaligned with no longer resonates and easily falls away, making space for healing and restoration. Your name, I am, is your power. Anything you add to I am, you also add to yourself. So you have the power to change and upgrade what you add to I am as you speak. So speak to yourself, encourage yourself, comfort yourself and remember the power, wisdom and deep intuition to know whether you are on or off of your spiritual path. Listen to your gut. So then we move on to the fourth verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. This is associated with the Anahata, heart chakra. Ana means unhurt or unbeaten or unbeatable, emphasizing the sense of being untouchable, reflecting the heart chakra's association with emotional resilience, unconditional love and compassion. This chakra relates to the element of oxygen, the 888 element that is synonymous with the gematria of the name Jesus. It's the breath of life. It's the air that relates to the respiratory system in the body. The meaning of walking through the valley of the shadow of death is testing, trials, the trials and illusions that we perceive with the senses, 
but that we can dissolve by truthful knowingness. So, for example, the heart gets blocked by grief. But once we transmute grief into gratitude, so i.e. when I lost my mum, the grief was excruciating. But remembering to be thankful for her life and her eternal essence helps to dispel that grief. And going one step further and reminding myself, my cells, that the reason for the richness, the heaviness of that grief is because of the richness of our love, of our relationship, of the impact that we had on one another's life both in happy moments and in sad memories, we taught each other, we held each other, and we danced a cherished dance that no other two souls could dance. And yes, it is a roller coaster with its peaks and pits. But grief is the small price to pay for a gift so divine that it floors me every time I think about how blessed I was to have that ex human experience of knowing her. Now this center, this heart center is fed, activated and cleansed by air. So breathe, release, accept and know that everything is perfect and everything is a, is a gift just as it is. I will fear no evil illustrates the protection that we have when we live from the heart. An existence fueled by good thoughts, good words, good deeds fills your electromagnetic field with so much strength and vibrance. It's as though you actually were an impenetrable fortress and thou art with me evokes faithfulness, the power of belief in true source love, so strong that your heart is just filled with surety and knowingness. For God is willing, eager and able to answer all of your prayers all you have to do is know it. All you have to do is have faith that that is the truth and then everything changes. When attention is drawn to this center with a verse such as this, along with the frequency of love, oxytocin swells the heart and acts as a catalyst for the upgrade and release of the biochemicals of enlightenment. So now we move on to the second part of the fourth verse. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This brings our attention into the spine, so the staff and the esophagus, the rod in the throat. This verse is associated with the Vishuddha throat chakra. The word Vishuddha can be understood as vish, meaning to penetrate, and uda meaning to purify, emphasizing the power of this chakra for bringing air into the body and for bringing vibrations to life. Air is incorporated with material substances at this point, so the throat is very much like the horizon of the body. Vibration is literally everything. Vibration is sound. Sound creates light. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the vibration. Our breath and our voice control the vibrations of the body. So when we draw our attention to the throat center with a scripture like this, we are activating its ability to bring harmony throughout the body. Now the secretion of the throat chakra is really important. 
um, because this secretion will be stimulated by reading a verse like this as well. And that secretion is called thyroxine, the body's endogenous iodine-based hormone. And I talked about this chemical in depth in this other previous video, and I don't want this to get too long, so please watch that if you're interested in thyroxine. But in short, we can't live or maintain any level of health and purity, especially not in today's world, without this inbuilt production, this endogenous production of this magical substance known as thyroxine from the thyroid in the throat chakra. And that moves us on to the fifth verse. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And this is associated with the Ajna or Anya brow chakra relating to the third eye, the eye of vision. The word Ajna is linked to command or authority because as the seat of divine sight and higher level perceptions, it really does have authority over the temple body. At all times, at all times, there exists a bountiful table available to us. But sometimes we spend too much time focusing on perceived illusions the enemies, instead of remembering our divine identity and building new realities in this center. When we do overcome the illusions of the sense world, our head is literally anointed with oil on the inside. And sometimes people feel the sensation of it on the outside because it's so powerful. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that the biochemicals of enlightenment pour from the pituitary and pineal into the cup, which is the third CSF ventricle, and consequently run off over into the rest of the body during peak moments of bliss and awakening. When we draw our attention to the third eye energy center with a scripture like this, true source love, the perfect light instantly recharges the body and sends a ripple of energy through the body. And this brings us finally to the sixth verse, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, <laughs> this blessing of a verse is associated with the Sasarara or Sahasrara crown chakra or seventh energy center at the crown of the head. Sasarara is translated as a thousandfold or infinite. And biblically, a thousandfold signifies the Christ mind and infinite power. This is the unity point where individual consciousness merges with eternal, universal consciousness. As the energy and essences of the third eye runneth over, the brow chakra unites with the crown chakra and we realize unity, Eden or bliss consciousness. And we realize that we're forever one with God. The essence of all that was, is and is to come. When our focus is drawn to this chakra, we loosen our attachments to the 3D world, to illusions and access our divine nature. When we dwell in the house of God, we're dwelling in unity consciousness. And if we're doing it forever, we're activating Nirbi Kalpa Samadhi, which means immortal bliss. And so all of this inner alchemy and the energies of the chakras is all incorporated in this one short psalm. 
I mean, isn't that just incredible? So, you know, use it as a spiritual meditation practice as the Swami did and see how it works for you and let me know in the comments. I'm definitely going to start using it in my practice. So thank you again for this request. This has been a lovely journey and insightful yana meditation for me to go on in creating this video for you all. So thank you very much for watching. As always, the links to my books, courses and other resources are in the description box below this video. And may divine love manifest itself in you all, always and in all ways. Namaste.